I'm driving around in a car which is worth substantially more than any house I've ever lived in. It's also significantly nicer than my apartment and it has more TVs. The official name of this car is the Rolls-Royce Ghost Series 2, which of course means that there was a Series 1. And when they set about designing the Series 2, the head designer of Rolls-Royce told his team, I want you to have sharp pencils at the beginning and sharp pencils at the end. In other words, don't change very much. So let me give you the key stats. If you want one of these, the dealer tells me that you need to spend between seven and eight million Rand. But the problem is they can't actually give you a price tag on these cars because they are so customizable. No two are ever the same. You can walk into a Rolls Royce dealership with a little pot of nail polish and they will match that color for you. They will come to your house and cut down your favorite tree and turn it into your dashboard. It's got a 6.6 .6 liter bi-turbo V12, which is kind of based on the BMW version, but then tweaked and fettled to give 420 kilowatts and 780 newton meters. And all of that power arrives very quietly. Nothing. All of those numbers pale in comparison to the figure of its zero to a hundred time, 4.9 seconds, which means that in a robot to robot dash, you could take on cars like the Audi S3, Volkswagen Golf R, BMW M135i. <laughs> oh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> 100 k's an hour. Yeah, that just happened. The Ghost really is a what is that kind of car. As you drive past people, you can actually see them saying to themselves, what is that? And that's because it has a number of very special features. The spirit of ecstasy pops up out of the bonnet when you hit the open button. The wheels have special center hubs that as the rest of the wheel rotates, the RR badge stays perfectly upright. These lines over here, painted by hand all the way down the car. The doors open suicidally and of course in true Rolls-Royce tradition there is an umbrella hidden in the door. Now it's difficult to get the scale of this car across on camera but it is 30 centimeters longer than a Mercedes S-Class and it weighs 300 kilograms more than a Range Rover. But of course the best part of a Rolls-Royce is being inside and with the Ghost you don't even have to close the door. Often the real mark of luxury is not defined by what an object is made of, but rather by how it is made. The handcrafted interior of the Ghost is exceptional, with beautiful detailing everywhere you look. The more modern bits and pieces are borrowed from BMW, but Rolls-Royce has customized these elements almost beyond the point of recognition. Regardless, they are drowned in a sea of perfectly stitched leather, two inch thick lamb's wool carpets, and high quality silverware. And with double glazed windows, it is unbelievably quiet in here. This could be the first Rolls Royce ever, which has a little bit of driver appeal, encouraging their owners to fire their chauffeurs, or at least send them on holiday for a bit. But as good as the front seat is, I have a feeling the back seat is even better. 
Now, as much fun as you could have in the front seats, I imagine that you would have more fun in the back. Now, it looks like I'm in a very luxurious car. There's acres of space, but if I fold down this center stack, it reveals a whole host of new toys. Each seat is actually built independently, so I can recline my own seat. And each passenger is given their own iDrive system, which they can control independently. So I can do things like change the radio, change the CD player, because people who have Rolls Royces probably still use CDs. If I'm feeling peckish, you can spec your Rolls Royce with a picnic table. Look at that, high gloss piano black finish, obviously. The way that thing folds out of the chair is brilliant. The best toy in the back here is not even the iDrive system, it's this, a fully specced champagne fridge. <laughs> Look at that, oh, that'll take a couple of bottles of Verve. Fold that back away though, because I think the best way to enjoy a Rolls Royce is with your eyes closed. I am so comfortable. I think that is the real success of a Rolls Royce, is that it can provide all of that power, but completely quietly, and still make you extremely comfortable. It is effortless, this car. If you do end up spending six or seven or eight or nine million rand on a Rolls Royce, your money will buy you a very nice car, no doubt. But what it really gets you is a Rolls Royce. And I've been racking my brain trying to think of anything that supersedes this car. I mean, you could get a supercar and it would be very, very fast and very fancy, or you could get a hypercar like a Koenigsegg and it would probably cost more. But are those Rolls Royces? It's a brand that has become synonymous with the best. It's even been accepted into the English language as a metaphor for the best. It's the top of the motoring pile. But in terms of status, what else is there?